guys, this is Laurel of the Dabbling Hook. A little cool. It's actually a pretty nice day out. Um, temperature wise, I uh, might be in the 50s. Maybe not, probably around 50. But that big bright yellow tree that I had shown before, it's got a few straggly brown leaves on it. Um, everything is rustling. It definitely feels fallish. Um, I'm outside. <laughs> Um, it's a it's a nice day out for a person who's always cold it's it's a nice day out um, but I'm gonna be quick uh, lighting inside is not the greatest so I figured because it's so nice I should take advantage of this so um, so this is really this really needs to be quick on my part um, what am I going to talk about what am I gonna talk about um, craft fair I'll do at the end um, finish objects and just stuff, just just stuff, catching up stuff. So um, I will put in either now or at the end of the video, um, a little video clip I did of um, my best customer at work, her desk with all her stuff because we're moving buildings again. And so I took the opportunity to take a little clip of um, all the items that she has on her desk, um, not all, some of them. Like I said, she dispersed some of them in our last move, so. <sighs> the other thing, um, ooh, I won the, I was one of the winners of the, um, the Halloween crochet along uh, hosted by um, the underground crafter Marie and um, Umbaka Designs, Crochet or Crochet Designs. Um, so I got the email earlier this week or last week that I was one of the winners out of the blue, didn't even expect it at all. So, was, um, and I didn't even do all the, um, all the patterns either, but I'm a winner. And what do I get? Um, you may hear the neighbors, maybe not. Um, the winner, what I got is I got to choose a skein of um, in stock um, yarn from Undead Yarn. So, so excited. Um, the only thing that she had in stock was, um, I think it was lace weight or and DK. So I chose a DK. So we'll see. Um, so I'll be showing you that once I get it. So excited. This is the second time I've won something. Yeah, the first time was with, um, oh gosh, what is her name? She hasn't posted on Instagram in a long time. Um, shoot, I'll put it on the screen once I look it up. I actually have a couple of her patterns, um, but she did a shawl and I was tagged by another Instagram friend um, on one of her giveaways and we won. So I started that in a Karen cake and it's all single crochet and you guys know how I feel about single crochets. I love it for doing amigurumis, but other than that, it's just, I wasn't in the right mind frame, I'll say. So it's been parked for close to a year. So maybe I will dig that up, but okay, it's getting a little windy, so hurry up, Laurel. Um, let's see. So um, uh, Sarah of Saltbox uh, Knits, she was doing her craft fair, her, her first in a while, I think she said she had done a couple before, but her first big craft fair, and it was Christmas themed, and she did um, all her stuff were Christmas themed. And if you follow her on Instagram, you'll see that her table. Um, so she did that, and she said it went well, and she did a review on it. So I'll put her um, a link to that down below so you can go check it out. One of the things though she was talking about um, in one of the uh, previous, the pre-craft fair video was that she does, um, she did coffee and chocolate and I'm not a coffee drinker, um, but I do love Dunkachino's, uh, Dunkachino, Dunkin' Donuts Dunkachino. It is like poison in a good way for me. Um, I hardly ever get it now because I used to drink it so much. Um, I always got the small and a plain bagel. I like plain bagel, not toasted or anything with a Dunkachino, ugh, so good. Anyway, um, so I told her about that but now I get it so infrequent that I get a, either a medium or a large size as a treat. 
but I hardly get it. So that was a sidebar. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Do, do, do. Other things that she talked about, and this is going to be all over the place, not much cohesion here. She talked about um, cards, um, business cards. Um, I, oh, I forgot to bring one. Uh, Vistaprint was the first place I did. You can get a free, um, I think it's 100 cards of Vistaprint for um, just paying, I think, the shipping. Um, the only thing is their, um, their name is on the back, you know, so everyone knows where it comes from. Or you can just um, out and out buy Vistaprint. You can upload your logo, your designs, or they have pre, um, pre-formatted designs on there. But I do recommend using Vistaprint. That's what I use right now. I also used um, Moo.com way back when um, it was a, a trial offer that they had. So it was fairly cheap because Moo is, um, I'd say, pretty, pretty expensive. Um, it's up there. The quality of the cards can't be beat. They're thick um, and they're gorgeous. Excuse me. Oh, I showed what I was drinking. I do not like it, but I'm drinking it to finish it off. Ugh chamomile honey and vanilla I don't know if it's the chamomile or the honey and vanilla combination but something about that is no mm -mm. I don't like it but I'm gonna finish it and I also use it when the kids are sick um, my kids have always um, drank tea especially when they're sick it soothes the throat um, so they have no problems drinking tea and whenever they're sick it's one of the first things um, uh, they'll go for but anyway that was another sidebar um, so yeah, Vistaprint or um, if you can afford it, Moo. Uh, the thing I like about Moo, their cards are really thick. They have now a lot of shape, different shapes of cards. Um, but one of the things that I especially like is that you can upload up to 13 pictures. So if, um, if you have great photos of your items, you can upload up to 13 of them to use on your card. So one side of the card will be your item and then the other side you can put whatever on it. Um, I still have a few there um, that I never finished using. It's been, it's probably been a good six years since I ordered it. And um, I'll put a few clips if I can find them of what they look like. Okay, the other thing Sarah talked about was using scrap yarns and I forgot to bring it. I have a gallon Ziploc bag that every time I sew in ends, I snip and I don't toss them. I put them in there. Um, and then I use them in my amigurumi uh, especially the octos i put in um, a layer of fiber fill especially at the bottom and i move them off to the side and then i put the um, scrap yarn uh, in the middle of that just as a filler so i never throw away my um my scrap actually the only time i do that is when i make a pom-pom i made the mistake of using it in um uh, using the clippings from a pom-pom. I think the first pass of clippings, you're fine, but as you start clipping it further and further, it becomes like really fine and dusty. And I used the mistake of putting that in something once and it just, first it gets over everywhere. I mean, it gets on everything and you would definitely need a lint roller to pick it all up. And then it just, it does like if you squeeze the item, it comes out of there, so. Um, but I do use my, my scraps, I never throw those away. Um, do, 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 do. Um, she also talked about talking to other crocheters and knitters or um, just other vendors when you go to craft fair. That's a great idea. It ends up being like contacts. Um, the craft fair I did before this one, there was um, another crafter there. I always go right up to if there's another knitter or crocheter there. I go right in and start talking without even introducing myself first most of the time. And right now I'm in um, contact with her. She's uh, on Etsy. And we've been messaging back and forth about what shows we're doing and how they are and blah, blah, blah. So that's always a great thing to go up and, you know, start chatting. You see the same yarns that they're using, um, some of the same interesting designs. Um, and I also use this as an opportunity to try to find um, display ideas. Um, you know, because a lot of my things are flat down and I'm trying more and more to elevate them. So it's at eye level with people. So I'm always on the lookout for different ways, but something that's easy to carry because I have a small car and I really pack everything in there. So, um, yeah. So talk to your other vendors if you do craft fairs. Um, let's see. And the other thing I do, um, 
I had mentioned that I use all my, not all, but I often use my scrap yarn and just make a, a flower, especially if, especially if I have a little bit left, I just make even the smallest flower. Um, and what I did last year once, and I've, I've forgotten to do it this year, I brought a bunch of flowers and you put it out on the table and I saw at this fair I just did, um, a knitter was there and I saw her at a previous fair from last year too. And she had made um, hearts for Halloween and she said she needed it to take a picture so she just spread them out on her table and somebody actually wanted to buy it from her. So one, it's good decoration, it makes the table look, look nice, but um, you never know, somebody might want it and want to buy it. But I do flowers and um, I put them on either like bobby pins, the bobby pins with the little round part at the top. I hot glue them to, to there, I hot glue them to um, clips um, either the squeezy ones or the ones that bend um, and last year I had a bucket a little bucket of them and I gave it to I had anyone who made a purchase I had them go through it and sometimes I have them on um, pins where you can um, you know attach it and maybe even use it as a uh, oh, sorry if that's been making noise um, uh, just to be a, a regular pin that they can use um, so yeah, if anyone makes a purchase last year, I had them go through my bucket and choose something. So anyway, so that was conversation about craft fairs based on what um, Sarah Saltbox Knit brought up and it uh, just jogged my memory. Okay, next thing is finished objects. Okay, Whew, maybe this wasn't such a great idea. It's getting a little cold because I try to sit in the shade because it's very me very glary out all right what I just finished um, that granny poncho that I showed I have a little ball of um, yarn left so that's what I mean and I did I like um, I've always liked the crooked smiles on things um, but I have a hard time getting it to really look that way I'm really rubbish at doing the doing the facial expression so I started um, actually you know, drawing out little circles and trying to see if it's one that I like. So this is what I did. I draw out the little circles and pick out. So that bottom one is what I ended up using on this one. Um, that way it keeps me from sewing in and ripping out, sewing in and ripping out. At least I'll have a better idea of what it looks like. So I made that one, this little guy. And I have a little bit left of this yarn. So I will be making some more of these. And these do with the, with the, crooked smiles or the smirks those tend to catch the eyes of the kids a lot more too so just an idea um, other thing I finished was this is yep, this is the Wendy hat and I think I'm showing it wrong that way this is the Wendy hat it is a pattern by Victoria I think I've mentioned it before but doo -doo -doo -doo. Garlock, I won't say her name, but her business name is Crochet Trend. And this is what the hat looks like on the pattern. Now I've modified this hat. I made it by the pattern the first time and um, there were certain things that didn't quite work out for me. Um, obviously I didn't use, I think they used a cotton in here and it might have been a lighter worsted cotton, but it just wasn't working out. It was coming out too big and too deep. So um, for when I do it, I modified the top because it's just a basic increase for the top. So you can do it as big as you want. And then here on the side uh, where the closure is, um, because of this texture on the hat, it doesn't look like it in the picture, but when you actually close, when you actually do the attachment because of the texture I find that it was very bulky on the side so I've modified it where it lays flatter here now I'm not going to say what I did because this is a paid pattern um, and I don't want to go into too much detail etc I hope I'm not oh goodness try to get the hair out of the way because it does get very scratchy on the mic anyway so this one I did in um, uh, wool spun, the discontinued wool spun. Mm. Um, and what I found is that the fisherman color, the cream color is so much thicker than all the other colors. Um, but I also lined it in this, uh, I think it's called Merlot, no, Claret. 
Um, I really love this color. Uh, there you go. It's really, really pretty. It's a nice tone on tone color, um, burgundy ish color. It's too bad it's gone. But this is great. This was a popular one the last few years I've done craft fairs. Last year, not so much. Um, this year, the first few, I had three left over and they went in the first three craft fairs I, I did. Each, each one, one of them sold. So I figured I'd make a couple. They did not sell this time. A lot of people looked at it, thought it was pretty. They loved the button area, but it didn't sell. So I made this regular size one and I also made a small one. And this is in just um, loops and threads impeccable. And I lined it with, um, this is one of the Hobby Lobby prints yarn. And I went with this color because I had this button. I don't know if it's showing up. There you go. It's a, it's a pink color on the button. So I thought it would go well with this Hobby Lobby, um, this yarn. So that's that. And one of my customers saw that I posted it and might want it, but I need to tell her that I have two craft fairs coming up back to back this coming weekend and I will be taking it with me. So she needs to, if she wants it now or never. Oops, excuse me, man down. All right, so the other thing I made was the same hat, um, but my mom had asked, I'm from the islands. I jump around real, a lot. Anyway, I'm from the islands. Um, and my mom, our independence was um, a few days ago. And my mom there, they actually had the, um, like a celebration yesterday, a week later. So my mom wanted a hat. And of course she doesn't ask me for one until the day before. And it's the day before my craft fair and I'm an hour away from her. And she called me at the end of the day and I'm like, how am I going to do that and get that to you? Anyway, I tried, I got the hat done, but it was just, then the rain started and it was really, really windy and rainy. And I'm like, I don't think I can, I'm not going to try driving at night in the rain to bring this to you and have to deal with a craft fair tomorrow. So I wouldn't have gotten home till like 10, 11 o'clock. So she'll get it, but I wasn't for it, but these are the colors. I originally had different buttons here, but I took them out because they were all, I didn't have all um, of the same kinds of buttons. So I decided I didn't like the look. So I just went with red and all the same buttons. So again, this is the Wendy hat and you can, you know, the only thing is it's, I will say it's front posts um, is used in here and the way it's constructed, the, uh, on one side, when you do the front post, this is basically you're seeing the back of it here and it's popping out and I'm not quite sure I like that but it'll do I think in all honesty only us makers will really whine about it but anyway so this is for my mom another Wendy hat um, the other thing I finished was um, two things one actually sold like 20 minutes after I put it on the table because I did it I finished it at the craft fair um, that was a, I didn't even get to take a picture of it, but it was a, um, two button cowl and that, um, was in this colorway. That's pretty cool. That's pretty true to, um, this is the Montpelier peacock color. It's a very popular one when I make items with it, but this is the hometown USA. Um, I just actually came back and I bought, um, a couple more to make another one, uh, more fallish, uh, Julie tone colors. So that was done, finished at the craft fair, and it sold, like I said, 20 minutes after I put it down. And it was an elderly, not elderly, she was probably in her 50s, 60s. And she's like, oh, it's beautiful. She loved the color and she took it like that, which always makes my heart sing. So the other thing I did, I started at the craft fair, um, but I forgot to bring DPNs to do the decrease, finish the decreases, decreases. And my, um, Usually, even if I use a 16 inch needle, I can still work it to do the decreases. I still be able to pull it out, but um, I find that the, the Knit Picks needles don't bend as, um, they're the longer tips and they don't bend as easily. So I didn't want to risk breaking it or anything. So I put it aside. So I just finished a, a Gonquit beanie and I did this one in um, 
super chunky yarn. So this, I don't know if you can see the sparkles. Ooh, oh my gosh, it's getting windy. Oh, man down. Oh, oh, hold. Okay, I really need to hurry up. I didn't realize how much of a talker I was until this video. When I say I'm gonna be quick and I'm not. Anyway, all right, gust of wind and I lost a pattern in a tea bag. Okay. Yep, okay, hurry up, hurry up. So anyway, Algonquit and um, Thick and Quick, the red one with the sparkle in it, it's blowing out here. It's not as red here. That's more the color. And then this pom-pom is one of the keychains that you get at Michael's. Um, so I just took out all the keychain stuff. And what I did this time, I put a button in there and these are on, oh, can I even get it out? Yeah. These are on these little um, stretchy rubber bands. So I just put the button in and then you just, you know, thread it in and if I can get it back in. So it goes around the button. So the pom-pom is removable. So yeah. So that's that. I think that's all I have finished. So let's talk craft fair real quick. Okay, first thing, um, I talked about talking to the vendors. One of them, um, another vendor who has more sewn toys, at, um, she sells at the craft fair. She was there last year as well. But she makes these little um, necklaces, like a little, like a tiny little bag on a long um, cord. And she sticks little, um, little toys in there like little animals I guess it's for kids to hang around their necks carrying their little toys around but she came over and she was telling me how her mom had these old patterns and um, um, you know she doesn't use them blah 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 so she said oh she, she wished she had brought it over and then like 10 minutes later she came back she's like oh I did have it in my bag so she wanted to see if I wanted them so um, this was one called the lost lost the little lost puppy and um, it's one that I would definitely need to make modifications to because it's done in double crochet but this is the puppy and it's all double crochet so I'd have to redo it in single crochets so that's one oh my gosh yes it's getting cold it is Sunday at 350 and whoosh I'm in the shade and you can really feel it. Okay, so I took two owl patterns from her. This is the Great Horned Owl. Here. So I think after the holidays or after all the craft fairs, I will, um, oh, there's a picture of the back of it. I will, nope, different one. Oh, they look pretty similar. Can't see it. I'll show it to you in the other one. They look pretty similar. So, hold on, I don't want this to blow away. The other one is Snowy Owl, which this was one of the first ones I saw, and it actually kind of reminded me of um, Valerie's Snowy Owl right off, but this one here. And again, they all look like they're in double crochet, so I will definitely have to do modifications, but this is the back of it. And the other one looks pretty similar to the back of it. So yeah. Um, oh, these are actually Annie's Pattern Club. And the paper is brown. And I don't know if it's aged brown or um, if that's just, there's no date on here. But they're all Annie's patterns. Oh my gosh. I may have to take this inside. It's getting really cold. And then the last one is of a house mouse. And again, it's also done in double crochet, so we shall see. Okay. All right, let's see if I can finish before I freeze my fingers off. What am I wearing? Um, I put this on and it reminded me real quick of the um, hedgehog, one of the hedgehogs that I did. <laughs> I never noticed that before. But this is the peaked women's hat. Um, it's a yarn inspiration pattern. Um, I made so many of these, um, not last year, the year before that. So many of these. Um, 
I think Mikey has a, a tutorial on this and if it is I will try to remember to put a link in it but um, love it love it and I've actually reused this brim on um, my favorite hat pattern the divine hat I've done taken this um, brim and added it to that because I love to play with the brim on the divine hat I'm um, hardly ever do the front post back post brim that the pattern calls for so I love this this is one of my favorites as well so okay craft fair um, this is the third year I've done this one it um, it has been oh, sorry about that it has been uh, great the last two years and it was turned out great this year as well um, it started off slower than it normally did before um, but people did come it was raining it rained the night before really bad um, I think uh, Friday night it rained I think Thursday night it rained as well and I think we actually had um, no Friday we had hail uh, the kids said they heard hail and I did hear like something was um, hitting the house and I thought it was just because of the wind but there was hail um, and so when I woke up Saturday it was still raining a little not a lot it was still raining so I was um, you know hopeful that it wouldn't keep the crafters away or the the buyers away um, by the time I got to the place the rain had stopped but it was still pretty crappy out um, one of the great things about this fair is that they have helpers it's so well organized um, so much so that one of the the helpers one of the little girls there she's the daughter of, of one of the organizers uh, she's like oh I remember you um, and it turned out her older sister also helps and she um, she bought the younger sister something she's like I remember so that was nice um, but it's a well-run show the people are nice you get to order lunch um, they send out an email asking you if you want to order lunch um, and then you pay them when you get there but they have a few options for basically sandwiches but it's just nice to not have to worry about that because they don't have there's no food there this this one um, so like I said it started off slow but people came um, um, the people weren't as enthusiastic as previous years but it's not like they were bad or anything um, so it turned out great um, I did really well um, my best one I think so far I think no my third best one but it was still a great show um, what happened oh the scrutiny from the grandmas or I don't want to just say the grandmas the grandmas I think who either crochet or knit Wow it was real they were it's it's almost like they came in pairs and they were just like really eyeing things like they were touching it and um, so they would have something and like pull it apart and look and um, at one point I actually saw some woman like her head was down on it like like okay that's fine but there was a there's a whole lot of scrutiny this year from from the um, older it was from the older people um, okay I really need to hurry up because my battery's down to 21 oh. percent um, so that was that was interesting um, my two button cowls were I only sold two of them last year I sold a lot of them there um, but they were touched so many times so much so I was afraid that they would wear out the the yarn um, but I did sell two. One, the woman who bought the, um, oops, the one in the peacock colorway, and then one was a younger girl who bought a gray one that I had. Um, so that was good. I sold one of my big button cowls, which was awesome. Um, I did hear a couple of women said they liked the one button ones better, but um, only one person bought one. Um, the triceratops that I just made, those sold. Um, <laughs> I, it never ceases to amaze me the the older people are so you know, as much or just as much um, or more so um, in awe of the amigurumis than than the kids um, so the tri the two triceratops that I made sold um, the last two hedgehogs sold um, those were very popular um, and they finally sold um, what else I'm looking over at my notes and I'm trying to keep my hands warm um, headbands the headbands were a good seller as well those went pretty well 
I sold a shawl. That always like makes me happy when I sell a shawl. So I sold the, um, uh, I hope you didn't hear my stomach grumbling. Like I said, it's 3.57 and I haven't had breakfast yet. Um, I got up late and then I went to, to the car place to get maintenance done. And then I went to the yarn store because, you know, it's just around the corner. So I'm, I'm a little hungry right now. Um, so the shawl, I sold the brown butter shawl by Moogly. Um, it's the one I had done in um, creams and um, purplish colors. They were all in Nitpicks uh, Brava Bulky Yarns. Um, so a woman, she was there with her mom and she looked at it and I'm like, do you want me to take that down? And I did. And she's like, it's for my mom, but she's over there and I don't want her to know. So I took it down. She was trying it on and I always make it a point, um, tip, if you're selling shawls, everyone who looks at it thinks shawls, grandmas, I always make it a point to tell them shawls aren't just the grandma shawls that you remember. And I make sure I try it on or I put it on them the bandana style and it's always like oh my god oh wow so and um no fail the same thing happened in this one she loved it and she was all like cozying up to it and it's supposed to be for her mom but i had a feeling it may not make it to mom um but her mom was coming around the corner i'm like is that her short hair short blonde hair she's like yeah but she'll think i'm buying it for myself so because she was all ooing and eyeing when i put it on her bandana style so um let the, try it on, if someone's interested in the shawl, try it on them bandana style or any any other style besides the grandma style or throw it on, yes, this is a traditional, but give them options to, to buy it. So I'm always happy when the shawls sell. Um, a few people looked at them, but only one sale on that. Um, sorry for all the sniffling, but yeah, it's gold. Um, my footbridge beanie did really well today, um, today, yesterday. I sold one, two, I think three, three of them or four of them. So, which is why, um, this isn't the footbridge, but, um, I, did I sell one of these? No, I had one of these in the, um, fisherman with the sparkle and a few people picked it up, but it, there was no sale. Um, so I have already started another footbridge beanie. I started it while I was at the car dealership. So, um, I need to make a few of those, um, at least two of those, um, for this coming weekend because I have Saturday and Sunday shows. Um, one of the ones that was popular was the one I did in the Coney Island colorway of Thick and Quick. All right, I think that's it. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, I had a couple of repeat customers which just totally made my day. And one of them was from um, a show I did in a different, it was from a different show that I did, not from that one. And she came back and her daughter walked up and I'll put the picture I took of them. I had to walked up and I noticed the hat right away. And I was like, oh, and I was like clapping like some little idiot, but <laughs> it just, it was awesome to see. Um, but she said her daughter loves the hat and you can just tell it's been well-worn. Um, and at that previous show last year where they bought, they bought quite a few hats, which was surprising. Usually somebody buys one and they did the same thing today. They had, Quite a few items so um i had the daughter pick one of the um the keychain um uh the keychain octopus uh i had her choose one as a gift and then i had um a couple of knitted hats like just plain rib uh, i think it was one by one or one by two hats rib hats so she had another daughter and i gave her that as a free because they spent a good amount of money with me and it was just awesome And then I had another girl who was a helper there who bought something, uh, one of my Layla, co Layla cows. And oh, I can't talk because it's so cold. And um, she came by and she, um, she's like, oh, I bought one last year. My sister took it and went to college with it. So she bought one and I'll put in that picture as well. And she was wearing it around and just telling everybody where she got it. So. Um, it was a great fair. It's it's it hasn't disappointed the last two years and this year was no exception um, I was afraid about the weather, but it wasn't um, I sold a few octopuses um, As well, I sold one of my Amineko cats and if I can find the picture I will um, I will pop it in I 
I think I did it in the paintbrush yarns. Um, it's an AC Moore brand of ribbon style yarn, which I would not recommend for doing amigurumi because it's like a, a meshy net yarn that just snags like crazy. So unless you have uber patience, I wouldn't recommend it. But I'll put a picture if I can find it. So that sold. So I have one more Amineko cat and it's a big one. And Claudia, it's the hell spun one that I did in, um, in the homespun yarn that you love so much. That is the only one I have left. Um, so yeah, I am still working on my commission for the giraffe. I have gotten nowhere um, on that since the last time. So I need to get going on that. Okay. I need to go have breakfast, lunch, slash dinner, and warm up, and I think that's it. Yeah. All right. Talk to you guys later. Oh, oh, no. Colombo moment here. Um, the, um, what is it? The, the giveaway for the, uh, the hook, that short hook. Um, I can't think of anything to do, so I'll just do a giveaway just because. Um, so actually, no, just for fun, tell me if you've ever done a craft fair and how it's been, um, and what's been your best seller, and what do you do for, um, for setup, and... Oh, do you take credit cards? Um, I think I'd mentioned it before, but I highly recommend that you do because for this craft fair, a lot of people use their card. Uh, no, paid with cash, but typically most uh, of my fairs, people pay with a card. So do you use a card? So any one of those, um, have you done a craft fair? Um, how has it been? What do you sell? What's your best seller? Um, do you use a credit card? What do you do for setup? Blah, 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 blah. And I am moving like a maniac because I'm cold, so I'm going to go. I will keep it open till um, next Sunday after my next craft fair because I have Saturday and Sunday. So I depends on how tired I am and how gloomy it is. I may not do a, a video till that Monday, but that's it. Um, bye, because it's cold. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.